What's up guys, Hanish here, and today I wanted to jump in with a guide to how to unlock the new Solstice of Heroes armor. Of course, this armor can drop at 400 power eventually. We're going to talk about how to unlock all of the requirements for this as easily and relatively quickly as possible. Before we get into it, I should mention this stuff is going to be a grind no matter how you do it. There is no like massive shortcut where you're just going to get a free 400 power set of armor or anything like that, but there are ways to make it considerably easier and to make some of the progression much more predictable. So we're going to talk about some effective farms for a bunch of the kills you're going to have to get. So energy weapon kills, super kills, grenade kills and all of that kind of stuff, as well as the elemental orbs that you have to collect. And I wanted to kind of break down a relatively easy way to approach all of this stuff. So if you guys do find the video useful, a like below is very much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe and turn on notifications to keep up to date with everything related to Destiny 2. But for now, let's jump straight into it. So initially, you'll have to get your armor sets. Now that Solstice of Heroes is alive, you essentially just follow the kind of introduction to Solstice of Heroes, and then you will get the Scorched, the very basic green set of armor dropped. Now you will need to equip this armor in order to produce a bunch of the elemental orbs you'll need to collect. And the armor itself will track all of the objectives that you'll need to complete. Now we're gonna be talking about the different types of objective. Sometimes, depending on the class you're on, the different objectives are kind of mixed around or have different variations. So for example, on the Titan Scorch set of armor, you'll need to complete the Spark mission and defeat Guardians in the Crucible, but as well as this, you'll need to collect 150 Arc Orbs. If you compare this to the Hunter Helmet, the activity objectives always stay the same, but for the Hunter, you'll need to collect Solar Orbs on Earth. So sometimes some of the objectives are going to be different, but like I said, they will be just kind of mixed around or variations of that particular objective. So we can pretty much cover it all by taking a look at one class's armor, but I'm also gonna break down the activity objectives first, and then the various different kills and things that you need to collect and ways that you can farm them. So essentially, I think the fastest way to do this is to complete the activity content. Obviously, while you're completing missions or completing heroic public events or whatever it is, you will be gaining progress on the other objectives by the kills that you're making and stuff like that. So the bit that you can't speed up all that much will be the activity stuff. We've got the helmet, complete the spark mission and defeat guardians in the crucible, which you'll need 10 of. For the arms, you need to complete the homecoming mission and complete a meditation for Ikora. For the chess piece, you complete the Chosen mission and complete 10 heroic public events. Then for the legs, you need to complete 1 AU and get super kills in the Crucible, which you'll need 30 of. And for the class item, complete the Payback mission and complete 10 patrols. So you're going to have to run all of those activities no matter what you do. But once you've completed the first set of activities, you're going to have progressed quite a bit with the orbs that you need to collect. For any that you have left over, there are some pretty good farms and ways to actually get them done. So for any objectives where you need to collect 150 orbs, they could be Arc, Void or Solar depending on the subclass. Obviously, running the missions themselves will grant you a ton of these orbs, but you can also use the engine room in the underbelly of the Leviathan to get these done very, very quickly. At the end of the video, I will post a guide on how exactly you get into the engine room. You can do it solo, but as you can see right here, running an Arc subclass, and especially a couple of us running the same subclass right here, you can see all of the watchers that I'm taking down, all of the enemies which spawn out of this door, they are all producing a ton of orbs. So you can just go through here, get up to five or 10 orbs every single time. Then you just head back out of the door, reset it and repeat the process. This literally takes a couple of minutes. So this will be incredibly effective for getting any type of orb that you need. There is a section where you have to get void orbs on earth. Now you'll probably get a lot of these when you run the missions that are on earth. You'll also have the heroic public events that you'll need to get cleared. So I recommend doing those on earth to actually get progress there. On top of this, defeating mini bosses is another objective that you'll absolutely get done when you run through the story missions the first time. But for orbs inside of strikes, so if you need to make solar, void, or arc orbs in strikes, you will need 90 of them. And the absolute most effective way we have found to do this is to actually have three players in a fire team running the same class, obviously the class and the elements that you're going to need dropped. And what you can do is just run through strikes, especially any of the strikes that have a lot of kind of low health pool yellow bars. So things like Savathun Song, even Exodus Crash, 
By the way, you'll want to be in the absolute lowest power version of the strike playlist in order to do these. Depending on the power of your weapons, you will be able to boot up heroic strikes, but then actually see a bunch of immune enemies. But if you go into the normal low level strike playlist, if you can go in a fire team all running the same element, then you're going to produce a bunch of orbs. If you get into rooms where you've got a ton of yellow bars, it might actually be worth farming that room and wiping them farming that room over again until you get these done. You can also do that on the final boss room or something like that. But that is a very effective way to get the strike orbs cleared super quickly. The only other thing to mention right here, if you're wondering about super kills in the Crucible or Guardians defeated in Crucible, you will not be able to do this inside of private matches. We did go ahead and test it out just in case any of you really don't like PvP, but unfortunately you'll have to go into the proper Crucible and get those done, so that'll take a little while. So now that you've completed the Scorched set, that will actually allow you to upgrade everything to the Rekindled set, which is of course the blue version of the armor. And now we're going to be working on getting the legendary version. This is the stuff that will drop at 400 power. So like the previous section, we're going to list all of the activity objectives. And then I wanted to separately list a bunch of very effective farms that will get you any and all of the kills that you need for the rekindled set. So initially for activities, for the helmet, you need to complete the chosen mission and complete a nightfall. For the gauntlets, you need to complete payback and three heroic strikes. For the chess piece, complete 1 AU and win non-private crucible matches, which you'll need 5 of. The legs requires you to complete the spark mission and complete 10 adventures. And then for the class item, you'll need to complete the homecoming mission. Once you've got these activities out of the way, once again, you can begin to focus on the kill objectives. And here we have a bunch of farms that are going to get these done very quickly. So one of the kill objectives for the Titan, it's on the helmet, but you'll need to defeat enemies with supers of different elements. So for the Titan, it is solar, obviously on different classes classes you will get different elements but you will need 200 super kills. Now the best way in my opinion that you can get this done is to essentially rally the flag on a bunch of public events. But it actually is more effective than it sounds. So if you look at either Nessus or EDZ, preferably, those are gonna be the two places with the highest volume and variety of events. But if you look on the map, look for a public event that's only just begun to count down. If you go ahead and spawn into the area, you can rally the flag, pop your super, and just get a bunch of kills on nearby enemies. Sometimes you'll be nearby to lost sectors, so that is an option. But what I would recommend initially, especially when you've got a few minutes remaining, is to just pop your super and get kills on the nearby ads that you can. Then you can fast travel back to the same place the second you've used that super, rally the flag once again, and repeat the process. You can do this between two and five times depending on how long you have until that event pops up. But once you're on kind of the last minute, it is definitely worth rallying it one last time, then looking for a nearby lost sector so you can get a few more kills, pop it and use it in there, then simply fast travel to the next public event that is coming up, and especially one once again that has a bunch of time remaining. It sounds tedious, but actually you'll get these super kills done very quickly using this method. Some locations are better than others, you know, some areas have more enemies or have a lost sector that's really quick to get into or something. But nonetheless, Nessus and EDZ are going to be your best friends for this one. Now for the gauntlets for the Titan, or potentially for different pieces on different classes, you will have to defeat enemies with energy weapons of a specific element. So for the Titan, it's solar. Of course, it could be arc or void, but you are going to need 160 of these energy weapon kills. Now the best way to do this, in my opinion, actually my pal Easy suggested this one, so credit to him for that. But if you load into the North area of Mars, you can actually activate, of course, the escalation protocol and you'll get a ton of thrall and you can use an energy weapon. Something like Yorio's Gift is pretty good, but really you can use anything that you want and just get an absolute ton of kills on these guys. But once those ads actually start slowing down, if you head into this lost sector on the north part of the map, there is a ton of enemies in here and it's relatively easy to get in and get a bunch of kills quickly. So as you can see, I've just farmed a ton of kills inside. You can go back out, loop around and rinse and repeat this process. And for 160 60 kills is going to be very quick. If you're left with a bunch of enemies to defeat for the class item objective or the objective for 500 enemies defeated, which could be on any of these pieces depending on your class, the Mars North Lost Sector kind of method will pretty much be your best bet here as well. Plenty of enemies to kill. They're all relatively low level, so they go down quickly, which means that you can repeat the process quickly. So just bear that in mind. The Lost Sector at the north of the Mars map and the nearby S 
escalation protocol will get you a ton of kills very fast. Now there is another objective for the rekindled set where you need to defeat enemies with grenades of differing elements. For the titan it is arc grenades but you're going to need 120 grenade kills and one of the best ways to do this in my opinion is to actually grab the nightfall challenge card. You'll need the one from Xur. This one is going to offer you grenadier as a modifier so if you put grenadier on match your element to whichever type of grenade you need to get kills on so that you've got bonus damage that is via the singe so I ran arc singe. Then of course your grenade mods or any double grenade exotics on the class. Any stuff like that that you can throw on then boot up the prestige nightfall. You can kill enemies in the nightfall itself or you can use nearby lost sectors to actually farm while you're in the nightfall with all those modifiers active and you're going to get the grenade kills pretty quickly. There is also the bonus where you need to defeat enemies with melee abilities and for this you'll need 60 melee kills. On the titan it is void melee abilities but obviously it will change on different classes and you can also use the nightfall challenge card thing here as well so if you put the brawler modifier on it will actually recharge your grenades quicker once again, put in matching element, which increases your melee damage. With the Titan, you can use the ACDO feedback fence. This is essentially going to give you your melee charge back every couple of hits that you get with your melee. So I use a charge melee to start damaging an enemy, a second melee to take them down. And every time I punch twice on one enemy, I essentially get that melee charge back. So that's a fair amount of pretty quick melee ability kills. For the Warlock, if you run the Claws of Ahamkara, and then especially the double melee tree on the Stormcaller, if you can, that's going to make this pretty quick and the hunter has the Aphidia Spathe. This grants you a double charge for the melee. If you dodge near an enemy, you have a chance to get that charge back as well. And then you run those exotics inside of a Nightfall with the Brawler modifier and hunt down a nearby Lost Sector or something like that. Bear in mind, you will have done a fair amount of melee kills while you were doing the objectives for the activities. There is one which might be a bit of a grind. You'll need to defeat enemies with power weapons and you'll need 80 kills. So for me as a Titan, it's Arc Power Weapons. My method for this is actually the engine room inside of the Leviathan. Now when you're inside of here, you do have the kind of watcher enemies. If you fail to kill all of these once you've been spotted, it will spawn a bunch of enemies out of one of the doors. So as you can see, I've got Warcliff Coil on. I kill one of these guys, which actually drops a heavy brick. That's one of the main reasons this is a great spot to be because you get guaranteed heavy everywhere. I grab that brick, move to the middle of the room. The enemies actually start pouring out of this door right here and I can just absolutely delete them all. A load of them drop heavy. I pick it up with the war cliff and then I even use heavy to defeat the remaining watchers once all of those enemies are down. All of them will drop heavy as well. Then you just head back out of the door and repeat the process. And that is essentially going to be the fastest way to get the power weapon section done. If you don't know how to get into the Leviathan or which direction to go once you're inside, I'm actually going to run a clip in just a second that shows you how to get in there. It's pretty easy to do solo, so stay tuned for that in just a moment. But I'm going to say thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope it helped you out. If you have any suggestions on any of this stuff, drop them down in the comment section. We can all help each other out. If you have any questions as well, hopefully we can help each other out in that comment section below. But if you found the video useful, a like is very much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe like I said, if you want to keep up to date with everything related to Destiny 2 and the upcoming Forsaken expansion. I'm going to end the video with the guide for how to get into the engine room of Leviathan. A couple of things to mention about it, I would load it up on normal mode. You're going to spawn in up the top here. If you drop down, there is actually a room down below where you need to pull a series of levers in a particular order in order to open access to the underbelly of Leviathan, which is where you'll need to go. So the code that you need to actually put into the levers right here is 1, 5, 3, 2, 4, and 6. You need to pull the levers pretty quickly, but you can do it solo. You can see I'm actually doing it solo right here. If you have a friend with you, it's going to be considerably easier to get it opened up. It doesn't have to be opened by one person or anything like that. But once you put that code in, you'll see that it says the way is open. And then you simply follow the route that I'm showing you on screen right here and you'll get to the engine room where you can do that heavy farm that I just showed you. So I'll let that run out for just a moment, guys. Once again, though, thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the grind for this armor, man. Pretty intense stuff. For now, though, I hope you have an awesome day and I will catch you very soon.